You came here for three stocks February 2019, so let's not waste any time and let's get right into that right now. So this video did take quite a bit of time to create, research, film, all that fun stuff. So if you appreciate that, drop a huge like, it goes a long way and I truly appreciate it. But anyways, our first pick for this month is Intel. So Intel is the first stock that I really want to discuss for February 2019 because I believe that the sentiment around Intel, all the news around it, kind of what investors think about Intel right now is being blown out of proportion. Intel is a world-renowned blue chip company that's over a $200 billion market cap. They've been around for over 50 years and they have over 100,000 employees. And on top of this, as an added bonus, they also pay their shareholders a 2.5% dividend. So their fundamentals are also extremely strong with a current PE and a forward PE of around 10. And this is kind of confirmed by their last quarter Q4 earnings that they just released. In this last quarter, they had record revenues that they announced in every single business segment. And their revenue for the quarter was up 9% despite macro weakness from markets like China. And when you look at fiscal year 2018 as a whole, revenue was up 13% and free cash flow was up massively to 38% year over year, which is extremely strong numbers here from Intel. They also have a buyback program like most companies do have right now, and they plan to buy back $15 billion worth of their shares, which also obviously increases shareholder value. And if that's not enough, they will be raising their dividends by 5% in 2019 as they expect another record year for the company, but we'll get more into that in a few. And as you can see from these charts right here, they pretty much sum up what their 2018 was like. Incredible growth, strong sentiment all around for this company and this stock. Now, this is all great and they had a great 2018, but as we all know, the current stock price does not represent the current value of the company, but represents the future value of the company. So looking here at what Intel said for their fiscal year 2019, most things are in line with what they expected from Q3. However, the one thing that is a growing concern, which I think we all should be aware of as investors or potential investors of Intel, is the China-US tensions. So the US and China is currently working out a deal that if it is resolved 2019, could be a huge catalyst to not only move Intel higher, but a lot of semiconductor stocks or tech stocks in general that have been hit incredibly hard because of these tensions between the two countries. Another concern here that they mention is the price of memory dropping, which is affecting most semiconductor stocks. But this is simply due to the cyclical nature of the business and semiconductors in general. So it's not too much of a long-term concern in my opinion, especially when you're looking at three to five years out for the stock. So if we do believe that semiconductors are currently in a down cycle and Intel's still posting such strong numbers, then we can definitely see much, much stronger results and kind of blow out numbers when the cycle reverses and starts going higher. So the predictions in fiscal year 2019, like I mentioned, do show another record year. But when we look closer at these numbers, they aren't as great as Intel wants you to think. As you can see here, revenue, they expect to be up around 1%. Operating margin, they expect to be down around one percentage point. And EPS, they expect to be up around two cents per share. So pretty much flat year over year growth, but technically because of the slight increase, it will be another record year is what they're predicting. But the good thing here is that all of this is considering and taking into account that China and the weakness between US and China is gonna continue in 2019. And of course, the second thing like we discussed is memory prices will continue to drop in 2019, which may also affect Intel's profits. Now, if either of these two things do get resolved or if both ideally get resolved in 2019, memory prices start going back up, China, US come to an agreement and there's more trade between the two countries. And as a result, a lot of these companies start posting strong numbers again. Intel, I think, will be one of those companies that benefits greatly from it. So just keep in mind that what Intel has posted here is kind of like worst case numbers, what they expect if the tensions between the US and China continue. But we can see a lot of upside here if things do start to look better. So of course, analysts are also bullish here on Intel. As you can see, they have around a 14% upside on the stock. It's what they're predicting the stock will be in the next 12 months or so. And I don't think that's very unlikely. It's pretty reasonable in my opinion, considering the PE of Intel, which is currently around 10 right now. And let me just get this clear. I don't really think that Intel is gonna be one of those stocks that doubles your money in a year. What I see Intel is as a very safe stock, a very good dividend payer, good for diversification into the tech or semiconductor space, and just kind of a stock where you can just have in your portfolio and not worry about the company going bankrupt and just have that consistent dividend growth year over year. With that being said, I do expect the stock to go higher in the next three to five years, so there will be some capital appreciation in my opinion. But like I said, if you're looking for a get-rich-quick stock, Intel is most definitely not that company. 
So our second pick here is a company that most, if not all of you have heard of, and a lot of you most likely use this service as well. Maybe not so much in the last few years, but definitely at some point. And it is a stock that's often overlooked by the investor community, and that's eBay. So eBay does report their earnings after I film this video, but most of the information presented in here should still be accurate even after that earnings report. In their last earnings report, they did have revenue up 6%. They generated almost $400 million in free cash flow, and they bought back around $1 billion of their own stock. They also do have around $4.7 billion worth of shares that they can purchase still from the share buyback program. And they currently have an asset to debt ratio of pretty much one, meaning that they can cover their debts with their assets if required. Now, I would have liked to seen this at a two times or more because typically I like to see more cash on hand than debt if there is a struggle in the economy, you enter a recession or any of that kind of stuff. Now, when we look at the numbers that they've been posting for the last few quarters, you can see that eBay, it doesn't really have that great of a track record with beating their estimates. As you can see, they've missed two of the last four earnings and they've actually come in line with two of the last four. So this could be another quarter where they come in and either post inline earnings or miss slightly. But I don't think that's too much of a concern because there is some good news coming up for eBay, in my opinion. Keep in mind that eBay is a growing business. They are posting good numbers and they are still profitable. And if you don't know, eBay is one of the leaders in this online retail space. In fact, if you look after Amazon, eBay has a second largest share of e-commerce space in the US. So there's still a lot more potential, a lot more piece of the pie that they can snatch up. And they have a pretty good holding already on the market. So they have a good brand name out there. But to really be a true successful company over the longer term, there are some changes that I think eBay needs to make. And that is exactly what one of eBay's biggest investors, Elliott Management, has come to the table with. So Elliott Management holds around 4% of the company, and what they propose is kind of an enhanced eBay plan. And this plan pretty much suggests that eBay spins off StubHub, as well as eBay's portfolio of classified properties, because they believe that these businesses will be worth much more individually than being part of eBay directly. They also strongly believe that eBay should revitalize its marketplace, something that I absolutely agree with. And they also think that eBay should clean up an inefficient organizational structure and stabilize the company's leadership which has suffered an alarming degree of turnover recently. In other words, the management team at eBay is something that they think needs to be changed. So it's clear that the company is suffering from both a fundamental level and also from a management level. But this fund company here, Elliott Management, does believe they have a path to help get eBay out of this rut. And guess what? eBay is actually open to listening to this proposal. So you can see here from a statement, they said that the eBay board and leadership team regularly engaged with our shareholders and valued their input. So when this news came out and you get the statement from eBay, it actually sent the stock skyrocketing up 12%, but it has since come down a little bit from there, but it's still above the $30 range. The fund also came out and said they believe that the stock could reach 55 to $63 per share by next year if eBay does implement the plan that they propose. So it has a lot of investors hopeful on the future of eBay. And really, I tend to agree here with Elliott Management. So like we saw, eBay really has a pretty large foothold on the e-commerce market here in the US, but they need to do a lot better to capitalize on this and take advantage of this. They need to revamp their website, they need to make it easier for shoppers and for sellers to go and access the website and get the products that they want. And if they do this successfully, I think that they'll be able to drive sellers away from Amazon back onto eBay, which a lot of them started off on eBay. And if that does happen, then the buyers will automatically follow as well. So that may be a bit optimistic, and as you can see, analysts may not necessarily agree completely with this plan, where they only see around 8% upside from current prices. And I mean, that's pretty reasonable because this is just something new that was proposed. eBay hasn't really implemented any of it yet because it's still pretty early. But I do believe that if in the next earnings report they do come out and talk about this or kind of address this, that a lot of analysts will probably upgrade their view on the stock. So nonetheless, I do believe eBay is a great stock to watch in February 2019. I do believe it could potentially move a lot higher this month if they do address this in the call and they show shareholders that they're willing to change, willing to adopt things that are suggested from this Elliott Management Fund. And I believe that'll actually shift the sentiment around the stock and potentially move it much higher. So our third and final pick for February 2019 is from America's favorite electric car maker, that's Tesla. So Tesla is also another company reporting earnings this week, so it could be another wild roller coaster ride for shareholders as it was in 2018. 
The stock has really been going through a $250 to $400 range for the last two years, so I would not be surprised to see it back down to $250 if we miss on earnings, or above $350, closer to $400 if we beat incredibly well on earnings. But there was some news that came out recently this month on Tesla, which kind of gives us a hint as to what's going to happen with this earnings report. Now, I did make a video on that, so if you haven't checked that out already, check out the link up here. But of course, in a nutshell, the big news was that they will be cutting 7% of their workforce, focusing more on Model 3s, and they also gave a glimpse into what their quarter earnings will look like, which we'll get into in a bit. But after all of this announcement, investors were not happy, the stock dropped 7%, and now it's trading at under $300 per share. But could this be short-term pain for a potentially really strong 2019 going into 2020? Musk seems to think so. So his goal for Tesla this year is to get them producing all variations of the Model 3 that includes the base model as well. And I think by fulfilling these orders that customers have been waiting on for such a long time will be a good move for the company because they have been getting a lot of negative press lately, especially when it comes to their customer service. So this may hurt their revenue numbers in the short term because they won't be selling the higher end Model 3, so the price obviously will be lower on these cars. But I do believe over the longer term this may help them because this may actually entice more people to go order Model 3s, base Model 3s, and as a result they'll get a lot more orders in the door compared to what they are right now. So when we look at their last earnings, Tesla does believe that this quarter will have more Model 3 sold compared to the last quarter, with a target of 100,000 total vehicles sold. So that's pretty impressive considering that a year ago this number was a fraction of that, and it's all thanks to the Model 3 here. So now we're going to jump back to what I referred to earlier, which is Q4 and their profitability. And Musk actually released a letter to their employees which got leaked, and in this letter he did address what Q4 could look like. So pretty much what Musk says here is that Q4 will be profitable but won't be as profitable as Q3, which in my opinion is still good considering they're still trying to catch up with pre-orders. So it's kind of a bittersweet situation here in my opinion because we know we're getting profits now in Q4. We don't know how high it's going to be but we do know it's going to be less than Q3. So this has investors kind of mixed going into this earnings report. So at this point you might be wondering why am I considering buying Tesla stock in February 2019? Well, like I said, if there is something that's released in this earnings report that has not already been leaked in this letter, I believe it has potential to move the stock significantly in one direction or in the other. If it's bad news that comes out that investors weren't expecting, I can easily see the stock back to $250, $260 range for sure. In that case, I'd be buying more shares most likely. But if we do see some good news that comes out with investors weren't expecting, maybe they're going to be announcing the date of the Model Y, then we can see the stock well over $300, probably close to $350, in which case I'll just hold on to my current position. So I personally would not suggest playing earnings, especially on a company like Tesla, because it could really go one way or another. No one can really predict how the stock is going to move, just like most earnings report, but Tesla more so than others. But if you are on the right side of this trade, man, you can make some good bank on this stock. But really coming back to my core here, when I'm a long-term investor, I think to myself, where do I see Tesla stock in the next three to five years? And the answer really is much higher than it is today. They have absolutely incredible things going for them. They have the Shanghai factory opening up in 2020, which should drive a lot more sales and a lot more profit in China and Asia in general, which will make the company as a whole much more profitable. And if that's not enough for you, Elon also outlined a few more things in the letter here, where he states that you can expect to see full self-driving, which is fully autonomous cars, Model Y, which is of course the affordable SUV, the Tesla Semi, a truck, and of course the Roadster, which are all things that can help drive a lot more car sales in Tesla. And that's just on the car side of things. If you're looking at the energy business here of Tesla, they plan to kind of focus more on power walls, power packs, and also on solar roof advancements as well in 2019. So really bottom line, Tesla is a futuristic company and they're a company that I believe is gonna be around for a very long time, innovating and driving how we can lead a cleaner, more efficient future. That being said though, it is a very highly risky stock, a very highly risky company. One of the most volatile companies that I've seen with such a large market cap really. But for that exact reason, Reason, it attracts a lot of traders, a lot of investors, day traders, swing traders, whatever you name it. And because of this, I think that no matter what your position is in Tesla, you have to be able to sit on your hands or make quick decisions. If you're a long-term investor, you got to make a decision to stay in the stock for the long term and not be affected by the wild price swings. If you're a day trader or a swing trader in the stock, you have to be disciplined and cut your losses if the trade goes against you. No one really knows what's going to happen with this company. No one really knows if it's going to be much higher or lower. As I said, my prediction is it's going to be much higher in the future. But when you have a company that's just barely profitable and burning a lot of cash, 
risk is always something you need to consider. Now, analysts do see an upside here in Tesla with almost a 14% upside. And I think this upside can really be hit with a strong earnings report or with something new that we aren't expecting. Like I said, probably a Model Y announcement, something like that. And that's when I think a lot of analysts will come in and revise their ratings to an even higher price. Nonetheless, out of these three picks that I covered here today, I would say the safest would be Intel, followed by eBay, and of course, followed by Tesla finally. So I just want to remind you guys, if you enjoyed this video and you appreciate this, drop a huge like, hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to comment as well. Let me know if you're a shareholder in any of these three companies, guys. But either way, don't forget to invest positively and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.